Hey friends, Kerrigan Skelly with Pinpoint Evangelism here with you again today. So last time, last video I did like this where I'm in my car driving around. And by the way, I am being safe while I'm doing this. I just have a little extra time and I'm trying to multitask. But last time we talked about the Santa Claus lie. And I didn't focus on the origins of Santa Claus you know, where it came from, whether it's pagan or not, I'm just simply focusing on the sin involved in lying to your children. Uh, and whether you're a Christian or not, it's still a sin. Of course, it's more serious for Christians because they profess to be followers of Jesus, yet at the same time are engaging in this, this kind of conduct. You know, it's, even just taking pictures with the Santa Claus in the mall is nonsense, man. People are doing those things and encouraging their children to be deceived by so many people. But now let's talk about Christmas. So let's get, some, let's get a few things out of the way first. There's nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong, with giving your children gifts. I, mean, I give my children gifts all throughout the year. We do celebrate their birthdays, but all throughout the year, if they do really like my two littlest girls did really good in their school this year, so I gave them some kind of financial reward for that. And so I want to bless my children when they do good. And I want to reward them for doing well. And we celebrate their birthdays because the day they came into the world is a joyous occasion. But in all reality, I really think that all children should give their mothers presents on their birthdays because they're the one who did all the work on that day. Uh, that's that's a different video for a different time. But there's nothing wrong with giving your children gifts. Okay, so let's get that out of the way. There's nothing wrong with uh, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. I mean, we celebrate his death and resurrection. We celebrate his life and what he did. We celebrate his teachings by reading them, believing them, and obeying them nothing wrong with celebrating the incarnation of Jesus Christ, okay? Um, there's also nothing intrinsically wrong with putting lights on your house, with putting decorations on your house, especially if it's due to a certain season or whatever, and there's even nothing wrong with having a tree in your house, although I find that kind of strange, personally, I find that kind of strange. And there's nothing wrong with putting presents under a tree in your house, although I find that kind of strange too. You find no biblical precedence for such things. Uh, now, at this point, I know a lot of you are thinking of Jeremiah 10. I'm not really going to get into that today, okay? Um, personally, I don't think it directly applies to how people do Christmas. Uh, Jeremiah 10 had to do with uh, worshiping idols. And obviously, in Jeremiah 10, I don't think... God, had, or God or Jeremiah had anything in mind about the present day Christmas celebration. So all those things are out of the way now. It's not a sin to give your children gifts, not a sin to celebrate Jesus' birthday, not a sin to have decorations. None of those things are intrinsically sinful. And even if we assume or come to conclusions that the origin of Christmas is pagan, that doesn't mean that most people who do these things that may even have some pagan origin to them are doing them with idolatry in their hearts or that they're pagans okay so let's if, if we're going to argue against something let's make sure we use good argumentation okay and just to get another thing out of the way I personally don't celebrate Christmas I personally uh, since I've been an adult, I've only had a tree in my house one time. You know, what I mean by adult is when I lived on my own. Since I've lived on my own, I've only had a tree in my house one time. I don't give my children gifts for Christmas. Uh, I don't even like the word Christmas. I don't like Jesus was born December 25th. So that's my personal thing. But I, I want to be objective in my uh, objections to this this holiday. So when it comes to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, obviously I have no problem with that, but I think if you're going to celebrate someone's birth, it should probably be done on the actual day he was born. And in my studies of these things, studying uh, the studies around John the Baptist's conception and birth, the studies around his father and the, what he was at the temple and what time the temple and, and his, and he's from the, the order of, uh, of Abijah, I believe it is, 
I don't remember off the top of my head, but I'm just telling you, I've studied these things out, and the conclusion I've come to is Jesus was probably born on our present calendar at the end of September, beginning of October. He's probably born in the Feast of Tabernacles, which makes sense because tabernacle, it means to pitch your tent, to dwell among somebody, and so God, Emmanuel, God with us, God the Son, God in the flesh, began to dwell among men. So it makes sense that it be on the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, so that's my personal opinion when it comes to the birth years. But we don't know for sure, a hundred percent for sure, exactly when Jesus Christ was born. We don't know that. So, but if you're going to celebrate his birthday, it should be on a day you think he was born. Now, if you really think after studying it out and researching this, saying what the word says that he was born on December 25th. And you want to celebrate Jesus' birthday on December 25th, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I think you're wrong, but I have no problem with that. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with celebrating even our own birthdays, let alone the incarnation of Jesus Christ. I'm all for that. And I've actually considered uh, putting up signs and different things uh, around in September, beginning of October, but it would really make no sense to anyone around me. If I put like a sign on my yard, Happy Birthday, Jesus. At the end of September, beginning of October, people might think I'm just some crazy guy who's celebrating December 25th way too early. Okay, but if, if, if my birthday is May 11th and someone wants to celebrate it, uh, you know, March 11th, it's going to be kind of weird. You know, if people came up to you three months before your birthday or three months after your birthday. My birthday is May 11th. Someone wants to celebrate my birthday August 11th. Like, listen, dude, you're three months too late. So unless they're saying, like, happy, severely belated birthday. You know, but people aren't doing that. They really are just doing these things. And let, let's face it. Now here's where I really want to get down to the nitty-gritty here. I've been setting everything up for this, these points that I've made. That when it comes to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, how should it be done? Should it be done in decorating your house in ways which have nothing to do with the birth of Jesus? I'm not talking about nativity. See, I'm talking about wreaths and lights and Christmas trees and all that stuff. Is that is that really the way we should celebrate someone's birth? I mean, typically on someone's birthday, you get gifts to that person, not to other people. I mean, imagine if your birthday was was uh, you know July 15th. Right, July fifteenth, and everybody gave was talking about how excited they were for your birthday, and you're like, "Yeah, this sounds pretty. This feels pretty special." They're excited about my birthday, you know. I, they must really think I'm some kind of special guy. They're excited about my birthday, and 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 when they get excited about your birthday, they begin to talk about how excited they are for all the gifts they're going to get. They're excited about all the presents. They're they're making a list of things. They want people to get them. And you're completely ignored, except the passing thought or a passing mention. You're completely ignored on your own birthday and in the months leading up to it. And then, not only that, there's this big commercial enterprise where most, like a lot of businesses, make most of their money leading up to your birthday and on your birthday. I mean, what would, you, what would you think about that? That seemed really strange to me. And it is strange. Not, I mean, I thought if you're really going to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, that's not the way you should be doing it. The birth of Jesus Christ should be, should be celebrated with contentment, with thankfulness in your heart towards God for the great gift he gave to the world. <clears throat> it should be celebrated with holiness, not covetousness. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and drown themselves in many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. That's not exactly why I get that a little mixed up. But the fact is, godliness with contentment is great gain. Okay? And so many of you are so covetous on the supposed birth of Jesus. Sure, you may read the, the Luke story about Jesus' birth. You may watch Charlie Brown Christmas. You may uh, you know, watch Frosty the Snowman and Ruin the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which have nothing to do with Jesus Christ either, by the way. You may do all these things, but 
Are you celebrating Jesus' birthday in the way he'd have you to celebrate it? You know, so many holidays, quote unquote holidays we have, are just another excuse to be wicked, another excuse to be sinful. Take, for example, St. Patrick's Day. Now, if you read anything about Patrick, the Patrick of Ireland, who who labored among the Irish people in the fourth, fifth century, preached the gospel to them, then you know you know what he was really like, and he'd be completely against all the drunkenness and debauchery that goes on in 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 March on St. Patrick's Day. He'd be completely against it. And so, for so many of you, you you take this this supposed day of Jesus' birth. And you do all these different things that have nothing to do with him. You can't even really twist these things to make it seem like they have something to do with him. You do all these traditions that you've been raised with, and you're completely covetous on this day. And this is precisely why I call December 25th, December 25th, National Covetousness Day. That's what it is. Especially here in America. Now, so I've researched the origins of Christmas. That makes me opposed to it. I researched when Jesus was born. He wasn't born December 25th, in my opinion. That makes me opposed to Christmas. And I'm completely and utterly disgusted with all the covetousness and commercial nature to which people have a, have um, used the supposed birth of Jesus to profit themselves. I can't stand it. I despise it. I hate it. So, if you can celebrate the birth of Jesus, you're convinced it's December 25th, and you can celebrate it with a good conscience, and you're not being covetous, and you're teaching your children exactly what happened on that day, and you're, you're making the focus about Jesus, hey, have at it. It doesn't bother me. Um, but most people aren't, let's face it, most people aren't doing that. Isn't that true? Most people aren't doing that. They're being covetous. They, they they haven't looked into when Jesus' birthday actually is. They haven't looked into the origins of Christmas and how it started. Even the word makes me mad. It comes from Christ Mass, and Mass is talking about his death. We're celebrating the death of Jesus Christ now. Well, the Mass is the, is the giving of the wafer and the drinking of the of the wine from the Roman Catholic Church. I want nothing to do with that either. I, we take communion every every Sunday in our church, our local church. We have no problem with communion, but saying that Jesus is actually in that wafer, Jesus is actually in that that wine, is nonsense. It's not based upon the scripture. So transubstantiation is wrong. And then to celebrate his death, Mary Christ Mass. It wasn't a merry occasion that Jesus died on the cross. It's a very sorrowful occasion. Here we have the most blameless and innocent man ever in the history of humankind, and he's put to death on the cross. Um, now it's joyous for us because we get salvation if we repent and put our faith in Him and, and live with, live for Him, we get salvation. But that's not what Christmas Christmas or Christ Mass is all about. So hopefully that that helps you understand where I'm coming from in these things. And these are the two major things I have against December 25th: is the whole Santa Claus lie and the covetousness. Those are my two main issues. Of course, God calls us to love Him with our mind. So if we love Him with our mind, we should love Him in looking into these things, researching these things, seeing the, the beginnings, the origins of these things, seeing when He was actually born, and all those kind of things. At the same time, I'm not condemning anyone. If they really have come to the conclusion He's born December 25th and they're researching it, they're not involved in themselves in pagan stuff, uh, they're not involved in covetousness, they're just celebrating the incarnation of Jesus, well, have at it, man. Incarnation is one of the most miraculous and magnificent things ever happened in the history of humankind. Anyway, hopefully this is a blessing to you. It edifies you in some way. God bless you.